Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Author AKA. On this episode, we have an author you guys have probably heard of. If you haven't, you might have been living in one of the caves in his book. So, Don, please introduce yourself to the Alpha Eka crowd, and thank you for uh, stopping by. Hey, guys. My name is Don Bentley. I'm the New York Times bestselling author of the Matt Drake series, four books in the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan Jr. series, and then my first book in the Vince Flynn, Mitch Rapp series, which is Capture, Kill, and that comes out on September 3rd. And I tell you, folks, I, uh, I'm reading it now, and it is very good. It starts off great, and it continues to the book. I'll put my review out there when I'm done, but you did a very good job. As a matter of fact, I interviewed Kyle Mills last year about this time when he was putting the last of his yeah. Code Red. series out for Vince Flynn. So this is kind of interesting. I got you at the, the end and you at the start, which, hey, you know, that's kind of cool. Tell us about, tell us about the book. Yeah, so... Uh... Like you said, I got to, I knew for a while uh, that I was going to, or had gotten the nod to take over for Kyle. And then we got to make it official to the world uh, last year when he was doing Code Red and I got to tag along with him. And Kyle is, in addition to being a fantastic writer, he's a genuinely good person, has been over backwards to to help me as much as I can or as much as he could. But when I sat down to try and figure out what I wanted to do for Capture Kill, I spent a lot of time reading um, the the Vince Flynn books that Vince um, wrote. Just, just not because Kyle didn't do a good job. He absolutely did. But I wanted to try and go back um, to the source, if that makes sense, and try and immerse myself in the original world um, that Vince created and, and read how he wrote Mitch and, and what he thought about it. When I was writing my Clancy books, I did much the same thing where I would read one of the books that Tom wrote every time before I would write mine. And so the interesting thing about Vince is that um, Mitch Rapp actually comes to life in his second book that's Transfer of Power. His first book is called Term Limits. But the way that that Vince wrote Mitch is that he aged him every time a new book came out. And so what I mean by that is that if the first book mm -hmm. came out, and I can't remember what year it is, say it was 2003, then it was 2003 in that world. And the next book, it was 2004, et cetera. And he continued that practice until Pursuit of Honor. And after Pursuit of Honor, he went back and wrote the two prequels. So American Assassin and Kill Shot that are kind of Vin or Mitch's origin story. And then after he finished Kill Shot, he jumped back forward into the series again, but it had been about three years. And so he just picked up with current events again. And that book was called The Last Man. And that was unfortunately the last book that Vince wrote before he passed away from um, prostate cancer. And so when I was looking at it, I thought, you know, that's interesting. There's about a three year or so gap there in the Mitch universe where nobody really knows what what was Mitch Rapp doing what what was going on in that time and so I started digging around and realized that 2011 fell during that time and I thought well what happened in 2011 and so that's, that's, what's yeah. interesting with capture kill is I get to answer the question that Vince Flynn fans have been wondering about for almost 14 years now which is what role did Mitch Rapp play in the mission to capture kill Osama bin Laden. And so it's a ton of fun to do. Actually, when I got that idea, I started looking to see if Vince had ever addressed it. And on his website, mm -hmm. there's a section where he has um, questions from readers where people, he used to answer them. And so after the bin Laden raid, you know, enough people asked him what was Mitch doing that he answered it a little bit. And he said, you know, the, the SEAL certainly did the kinetic work, but there had to have been a lot of intelligence work in order to set mm -hmm. the conditions for that raid. And he, he said something, I'm sure that was probably off the cuff, that was something to the effect of, I'm sure that's what Mitch Rapp was doing. And so I started thinking about that and like, uh, what would Mitch Rapp be doing? And that's where Capture a Kill came from. That's clever. I mean, that you feel you after yeah. so many books have been written and what I'm reading so far, you filled it brilliantly because, you know, having read a lot of, of Vince Flynn's books, but I was able to, when I read it, to understand exactly, you gave enough detail that I wouldn't have to go back and figure out who 
this person is. I which appreciate is that. Interesting. Yeah, there's enough of that. That's that's probably the hardest thing for an author to do is how much detail do I put in a book about about a character that people yeah. know, pick up a book and don't know. And you did a great job. And now, okay, I get who he is, right? Yeah, and that's something. My so the the four books I wrote in my Matt Drake series, and then the four books I wrote in the Tom Clancy universe. I had the same editor for both of those, and he's a phenomenal guy. His name's Tom Colgan. He's edited everybody from uh, Tom Clancy when he was still alive to to Lee Child to Janet Ivanovich. And so he helped me a lot with that because he early on, like the second book in in my series was called The Outside Man, and I spent a couple of pages kind of going over what happened in Without Sanction, and he he had me take all of that out. And he's like, look, each of your books – in a series, in any series, in a thriller series like this, needs wow. to be a standalone from the from the standpoint that you don't want to have a barrier uh, to entry to new readers. And you also have to be very careful, though, about how much you give away what's happened before, because you want this reader to pick mm -hmm. up the book, understand that it's a series, be able to dive in, but then be curious enough to go back and say, man, I want to read what I missed. I know that something happened here. I'm not lost, but I'd love to to experience that firsthand. And so I spent, man, I, I can't, especially Pursuit of Honor and The Last Man, the two books, the, yeah. the bookends for Capture or Kill, I lost count of the, the amount of times that I read those because I was, number one, I wanted to make sure I had Vince's tone down, but I also wanted, I had to be careful that nothing I did, that it broke new ground, but it didn't upset the apple cart in some way that mm -hmm. I didn't understand that would you know, have second or third or order effects to the rest of the series. And so it was really fun because I could find these threads like Vince left. I don't know that it was um, on purpose, but he left a lot of threads to pull, frankly, with all of his books, right? Like you can mm -hmm. read through them and say, I wonder what happened with this guy or is there, is this girl still kicking around somewhere or what happened with yeah. this situation? And so it was really fun to do it from that perspective. And then also, I'm a kid of the 80s and um, loved 80s TV and movies. Um, Top yeah. Gun was one of my favorite movies ever. And I was really, really nervous when Top Gun Maverick came out because I was so afraid that it was going to ruin the original. And And I think they did such an incredible job with that movie, um, wow. giving, paying homage to the first one and all the things we loved about it while still breaking new ground in, this, in, the, in the character development in the series itself. And so that's what I tried to do with Capture a Kill is because it was a throwback book, I got to bring back some characters that had passed mm -hmm. on in the series. You get to see Vince, or excuse me, Mitch as a younger, uh, not a family man now. And so it was really, really fun to be able to go back and do that. And then hopefully not just give something, fans something they love about the series and a nod to older books and stuff, but also to break a, a little bit new ground from a, a plot perspective. Yeah, you want people to keep it for the next book to come out in the series. Yeah. But if they're just picking up this for the first time, you want them interested enough to go, you know what, I need to go back and read some yeah. of the prior books about yeah. a character. I'm writing a, a, a book off of my one of four off one of the characters, and I have to put how much do I put her in the, you know, yeah. redesign the character, uh, which is, you know, it was it's fun it's interesting so do you you like doing the research i mean there's a there's a ton of detail yeah in the, in the book i did quite a bit um with this one and it was and research to me is it can be a couple different levels like there's a i put a lot of my friends um in my books and and the reason i do that is uh, when my first book without sanction came out i was doing a radio interview and the interviewer said are you matt drake my protagonist matt drake and you know, I have kind of an interesting background. I was an Apache pilot for 10 years and an FBI special agent and SWAT guy. But I said then, and I still say now, you know, I am absolutely not Matt Drake, but I've stood in the same room with men who could be. And, and that has really helped my writing. And so one of those men makes an appearance in this book. His name's Jason Beefley. In the book, he's a, a CIA paramilitary officer. In real life, he spent um, the first part of his career in the Ranger Regiment, but the majority of it in an Army Special Mission Unit. And so he is kind of my go-to guy when it comes to tactics or weapons yeah. or how folks who do what he did for a living, he could be Mitch Rapp. Uh, 
how they think and work and act. And so that's, you know, one part of the research. Mm -hmm. A bigger part for this book was certainly around what happened leading up to the bin Laden raid. Like, how did they know where bin Laden was? What were the kind of the things that, again, from the intelligence preparation of the battlefield perspective, what did the CIA or other agencies do to help set the conditions for it? And then I think, too, one of the things that's interesting is any historical event we have the benefit of understanding how it turned out. And so when you look back, say, on D-Day and the beaches of Normandy, Mm -hmm. we don't ever look at it from the perspective of it could have failed because it didn't fail. And so we don't think of it that way. You know, you can kind of think, well, of course it was going to work. And the same thing with the bin Laden raid, that we have the ability to look back at it and say, well, of course it was going to work. But in the moment, you know, Joe Biden is, is famous, has famously said that, He told President Obama, don't do it. And there's there was an argument to be made that even if it was successful, the Pakistani reaction could Mm -hmm. forever destroy our relationship. If it wasn't successful, we could very well have started inadvertently a shooting war there in Pakistan Mm -hmm. between potentially ourselves and the Pakistani Air Force or something. And so there really was, and I wanted to capture that in the book. I I stay as close to actual events around the raid as possible. And a lot of the things that you see Mitch and some of the other folks do in this book is Mm -hmm. based on things that actually happened. But I really encourage people, you know, if you're interested in that, there are a ton of great from the time, newspaper articles and specials um, dedicated to everything that led up to that and then the craziness that happened during the actual raid. Yeah, you mentioned uh, D-Day. Eisenhower even wrote a letter, if it failed, Mm -hmm. with a different date on it. Yeah, yeah. And the reason was because just in case it was was found out, that letter that that would be the wrong date. Um, Yeah, yeah. That's amazing because we look at things like and then, you know, some people write alternate uh, history, you know, yeah. uh, books and things, but we normally look at something and they go, how can it, how can it succeed? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you do this, you have the preparation, the, the, the folks, the fortitude to do it, the equipment, the intelligence, whatever, whatever we, you know, the military does. Uh, and even years with the, the bin Army. Laden raid, what you have to be careful with, with any actual historical event where you're in, inserting a fictional character is that the story has to be that your fictional character embarks on exciting enough to justify the fact that you're inserting him in there, but it also rings faults if, you know, uh, I say this because um, I think he was a little bit in jest, but it could have been a serious question. When I was pitching my idea for this book, I had to do it to two people, to Emily Bessler and then Sloan Harris, and those are the two that are the gatekeepers of Vince's legacy. So Emily Bessler is the editor. She was the editor. She's Brad Thor's editor, a whole bunch of great writers editor, but was the editor for Vince for all the books and then Kyle for all the books and then still for me. And so I had to pitch it to her. And then the second person I had to pitch it to Sloan is, was Vince's agent and is still the agent for his estate. And so Emily, I'd never met yet. And so I was giving her the pitch via zoom and she was working from home that day and so i'm watching her and she's in her kitchen kind of walking back and forth and listening to me (laughs) and in my head i'm like she hates this like she absolutely she hasn't even made eye contact with me yeah she (laughs) she hates this idea and so when i finished she stopped and looked in the camera and she's like i think it's fantastic you should do it and i'm like oh that's great and so i was kind of on cloud nine and then when i pitched it to sloan at the end he's like so are you telling me Mitch is going to be number two in the stack behind Rob O'Neill? Is that what's going to happen? And, <laughs> and, I, and I hope that question wasn't just, but it's one of the things that you have to deal with when you're writing a story around a historical event, right? Because yeah. the star of the show, the, the climax has to be those seals fast roping into the compound and, and taking out bin Laden. But at the same time, whatever you put your protagonist, in this case, Mitch Rapp in there to do, has to be equal to that, right? Or else it's not right. a story. He's just a spectator right. and what's unfolding. And so yep. I spent a lot of time trying to get that right. Well, so far you got it pretty damn close. You did really well. <laughs> well thank <laughs> you. You haven't finished yeah, it yet, so you don't know. I might uh, I might have jumped the shark well, right I'm, at the I end. I'm just far enough along where I, I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> I have good intuition. Um, <laughs> 
so yeah, I think that's a, one of the harder things is when you write something historical, but it's still fiction. There's yeah. folks out there that are going to say, uh, you know, this is wrong and or that yeah. is wrong. But uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I appreciate you critical. saying that. It's the like. So my first book came out um, just four years ago, but I spent um, probably five or six years before then going to this really great writers conference called Thriller Fest. And I would sit and listen to writers that were kind of my heroes, like Joseph um, Finder and, and Kyle Mills mm -hmm. and Brad Taylor. And Brad Taylor has been kind of a big brother to me. He and his wife, Elaine, are fantastic. And during one of the, the panels, um, somebody asked Brad about research. And he said, you know, when I travel somewhere, I go there and 10% and of what I write is what I had in mind, the questions I had in mind, and the other 90% finds me. And so that kind of stuck with me. And I've been very fortunate with a lot of my books um, have been based on places I've either traveled to or been able to travel to. But some of them, like the opening scene in this one in Pakistan, I wasn't able to go. And so Google Earth is just fantastic. Like to oh, be yeah. able to get the, you know, the <laughs> satellite fantastic. views of the place and then click yeah. down to the person view. And so the opening scene of, uh, or actually the, not the prologue, but the opening, the first scene, chapter one, where you see Mitch, that cafe actually exists. Now I changed the name in order to protect the innocent, but it, the streets oh, and such around there, you could probably figure out which cafe I'm talking about, but that's, I think thriller writer or thriller readers in this genre, part of the appeal is to go to some exotic place that you'd never been to and yep. learn about things that you hadn't seen before. And they really expect that level of detail um, in the writing. And so the research is a huge part of that. Yeah, I, my wife and I went to uh, France and Germany this year, and we relived the book 104. So we retraced that soldier's journey through France. And there's a, there's a, a bookstore in the book. And I went and gave that bookstore a copy of the book. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah, that's it was awesome. kind of neat. You kind of threw them off a little bit. They're like, who the <laughs> hell is this guy, right? <laughs> Barge in here. I got, hey, let me give you a book. Like, what? For that's France. That's cool. Yeah. So how many books are you uh, scheduled to write uh, in the series? Yeah, so I can't really talk about my contract. Okay. Um, but what I can say is I'm working on the next book of the series now. Okay. Excellent. And there's are like a there's a lot there is a cycle through them right yeah they come out every september and so okay. um oh wow so that's interesting should, yeah 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 so they uh, the when your book comes out is a big deal um especially for these really big books because they're trying mm -hmm. to be able to number one condition readers in order to expect you know a vince flynn book at, at in september every year the second reason is they want to try and be published when they're not competing against other big books, right? Because you don't want to get knocked off the bestseller list by Stephen King if you if you're unfortunate enough to come out whenever he comes out, or J.K. Rowling does another Harry Potter book. You probably don't want to be anywhere yeah, you near her be. when that thing drops. <laughs> you don't be like so, a week yeah. or two after that, maybe a month. Yeah, maybe a year. We don't know. What you wait for is me to write another book. Then you put it on the same day. Then you have no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's easy to do. So what, what do you do in your spare time? I mean, congratulations to your son. He uh, just graduated A&M. And folks, he was able to put A&M in the book. I'm not yeah. going to tell you where. He did able to slice it in there. But now he is a devil dog. And for you folks that don't know, devil dog came from World War One at Bellwood. That's how they got the moniker of Devil Dog, U.S. Marine Corps. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he just got commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Marines. Um, I actually had a, &M, uh, a bunch in my last Clancy book, Weapons Grade. So that actually mm -hmm. takes, I uh, got the idea for that book because I was driving a lot. I live north of Austin um, from where I live to Texas A&M. And you go through all these little one stoplight Texas towns. Yep. And I thought, man, yep. this would be a great place to put a book. But yeah, it's in there. Um, and for what do I do for fun? I'm a, like like a lot of former military people. I'm a big um, fitness fanatic. I, I try and work I, out I am too. every day. Um, I live north of so, Dallas, a little a town called Allen. So I live there. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. I mean, I, I I'm 65, but I mean, I you know, I could probably pass the old PT test. I was in younger right now. <laughs> uh, I, 
to me, I mean, it, when, I, when I got out, I saw so many uh, normally enlisted NCOs. They get out mm -hmm. and they let themselves go. Sure. And I was determined not to be that. And then I also got into IT. When you walk into an IT shop, everybody looks like they just ate donuts for the last 30 years. And I, and I, I, and I was in sales, so I said, there's no way that I'm going to let myself yeah. go, sure. go down that path. So I'm, I'm like you. Uh, I, I like to you know, at least keep toned or at least yeah. the, you know, do something active. That's for sure. What, what did – on all the different books and characters that you've written mm – -hmm. Do you take the same approach when you when you write them? Do you, how much character development or do you do when you go oh, and say, okay, I want this character to be here? Uh, what do you, what kind of development do you do? Yeah, so writers generally fall into one or two categories. They're either plotters or they write organically, or sometimes we call it pantsers. And so mm. Kyle was um, definitely a plotter. He's kind of famous for his detailed outlines. And I think he, he said one of his, one of his outlines was something like 50,000 words or something like that That's before <laughs> he wrote the draft. Yeah. It's really a first draft that he's calling an outline. I'm on the other side. And so I genuinely have ideas for scenes that I think would be really cool to do. Mm. And uh, then my first draft is kind of connecting those together. And then the characters really get fleshed out in subsequent drafts where you to me i have to be able to i have to know the story more to understand the character and why he or she did the things that they did that's true most of the time every now and then i'll have an idea for a character like um, forgotten war the fourth book in my matt drake series takes place um, during the fall of afghanistan and the protect or the antagonist is a um, a Taliban leader who's been locked up in kind of that infamous prism in Bagram for the last, mm -hmm. I can't remember, eight or 10 years or something like that. And so I had the scene in mind of him getting, you know, when the Taliban overruns Bagram, of him being freed from that prison for a long time. Like it just was very clear to me. And so I knew things about him and what he was going to do. Um, but most of the time it takes me a while and and really the it's hard when you're writing a book um in any case in whether you write organically or you're mm -hmm. a plotter because in the first draft phase you're always comparing that work in progress to your last book which is now a finished book and you're like this is never going to stand up it's never gonna it's never gonna be as good and that's doubly so when you're mm -hmm. a pantser because there's so much of the story that's still just out there and so you're like this yep. is awful nobody's gonna want to read this but i think characters are one of the things uh like i said sometimes take subsequent drafts and i put a lot of my friends in these books like what we talked about before mm -hmm. and um, yep. one of the characters that um is in this book is an army ranger by the name of fred saxon and so Fred uh, was Ranger qualified. He wasn't a Ranger, but he was an, an infantryman and he and I mm -hmm. became friends. And so I had him um, pictured completely uh, for the role that he plays in this book and how I was kind of using to poke fun of him and stuff. And it's, I have to say as an aside, what was really hard about this book is that yeah. all the rest of my books, um, the predominance of my friends, the folks I worked with outside of the military were all from the Army Special Operations community. And so, of course, we spent a lot of time making fun of the Naval Special Operations community to Are the point sure? where um, <laughs> one of my books, uh, Hostile Intent, um, Brad Taylor was, was, I think he interviewed me for it on the book launch and he sent me a note before mm. and he's like, you might have taken the SEAL jokes too far on this one. He's like, even for me. <laughs> And so what was hard for Capture or Kill is Vince Flynn loves SEALs and uh, Scott Coleman's a SEAL. They, so I had to be nice to SEALs, but I had to figure out a way to still tweak them just a little bit. And so there's actually a SEAL character, Justin Garza, who is a friend of mine in real life. He's a SEAL. You can actually see him. can't remember if you see him on Jack Ryan and um, Jack Carr's uh, thing, but he's he does some work in Hollywood and stuff. So it was fun putting him in there and then poking him a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And then on a more serious side from a character perspective. So in 
usually, like I said, I would just put my friends in, but I would do things that were funny to me that they didn't think were so funny, but they're not the writer, so they don't have the choice. And so like Brandon oh. Cates and, <laughs> and, and Greg Glass and Jeff Mishler are all in this book. They're all Army Rangers in real life. In this book, they're Army Rangers. But in my Tom Clancy books, I made Brandon Cates a uh, seal, which I thought was hysterical. He didn't, he didn't think it was very you? funny. He, he tried. I can, <laughs> I can run a little bit faster than he can on some days. And so... But in this book, there's a character, a a young uh, army uh, ranger company commander that's named Mark Garner. And so Mark is a real person. He was a ranger qualified infantry platoon leader. He was or an infantry officer. He wasn't Mm -hmm. uh, from the ranger regiment, but um, he was uh, my neighbor in Germany during my last um, assignment there. And then Mm -hmm. he and his he and his um, beautiful wife, Nikayla, became very good friends of ours. And shortly after we left Germany, he rotated, rotated to Afghanistan and was killed in an IED. And so oh, no. um, in my last Clancy book, Weapons Grade, with the permission of their families, I used two characters, um, Shannon Kent and then Isaac Black, who's actually um, filling the role of his dad, um, Brian Black. I, uh, Shannon Kent was a a um, Navy cryptologist who was one of the few women in JSOC and she was killed in Syria. And then Brian Black was a Green Beret who was killed in Niger. And so I used both of them as kind of a tribute to um, some of our fallen warriors. And so when I was writing Capture Kill, I had, I knew there was this character and um, I thought, you know what, that'd be, that'd be really neat to use mark and so i reached out to to his widow nikayla and asked if i could do that and and she let me and so a lot of the characters like i said are people that i'm just having fun with but there's some seriousness there too that that's that's such a tribute i mean uh, you don't yeah you don't hear that a lot um that's amazing Uh, great kudos to you right that's that's pretty awesome actually very very awesome you don't think about that when you you know you don't think about you're gonna put them in a book but you're gonna put them in a book that they're doing what they loved. Yeah, there's yeah. a saying, and, and and I don't know who this is attributed to, that that but the saying goes something to the effect of people actually die twice. And so the first time is when they take their final breath, and the second time is um, when their name is not repeated any longer. And so I thought, you know, if I can take Mark's name and get it to mm-hmm. be repeated a, a little bit longer, or Shannon Kent's name, or Brian Isaac Black's yep. name, then that's the least I can do as somebody who writes nice. about these people. That's amazing. I mean, there's so, so many stories out there. Uh, but yeah, some, that's amazing. Congratulations yeah. on that. So, yeah, thank you. So the book's coming out uh, September nineteenth. Third, is it? Third. Is it? Don't do that to me. I'm probably <laughs> on the nineteenth. I'm probably competing against Jack Carr or something. I don't oh, need third. that. That's I right. need people. Oh, to no, buy I, it I'm, on interviewing, the third. I'm interviewing Jack Carr on like the fifteenth or something. So I just got <laughs> them all mixed up. But. Yeah, that, so that's I'm excited. You know, so this we'll have this out before then, so folks can, you know, yeah, go check it out and everything. But folks, again, uh, I'm not done with it, but it is really, really good. I, I like I like thrillers. Have you ever thought about writing another genre? Uh, you know, it's funny you should say that. And, and uh, these, so I I like to read in across a bunch of different genres and. Uh, one of my favorite genres um, growing up and then still now when I have the time is fantasy. And so I wrote well, the first book I worked on uh, seriously, I guess, in college was actually a fantasy book. So I don't I don't know that I would ever uh, write in that genre. It's really mm-hmm. hard as a writer to start over and, and build a fan yep. base from scratch a lot. But I certainly like that genre quite a bit. As well. You heard here, folks. You never know. Might get a wild hair out there in uh, maybe. Right, 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 right. See. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, Don, it's been a pleasure meeting you, and thanks yeah. for your service. And uh, I'm looking forward to finishing the book and then putting a review out. I, I, I don't read, I don't read all the books that I've interviewed full to. I just don't have the time. Sure. Um, I'm not much of a book reader, but you like to read. Uh, I used to read every week a book on the airplane when I travel. Mm. Plus, I just I love his books. I used to read almost every one of them. I think. Yeah. And I, I read when I read Hunt for Red October. I was an E six in the Army, and I almost got out and joined the Navy to go into summer. They said lose the rank. I get yeah. back. I'll tell you what I'll do. It. I, li- yeah. I like being a scout. I, I like doing <laughs> stuff like that. So excellent. So, folks, it's coming out here soon. Capture, kill, Vince Flynn, Mitch Rat. 
by Don Bentley. Yes, it, it is a very good, very, very good book. So thank again, you. thank you for being on Author Rick. I appreciate it. And I'll see you yeah, at Altricon, I guess. Uh, you won't. I'm not, I'm yeah, not going, going there, I'm not going but there? you have okay. a good time. I haven't been there first time, so we'll see. Yeah, you like, like it. That's great, people. Place, Excellent. Yeah. All right. Thank you.